So I'm going to introduce our first speaker, who is my Uncle Max Dolomunmun Harrison. Thank you. Uh, yes, as mentioned, uh, my name is Max Dolomunmun Harrison, and uh, I'm a human man. And that's where I was handed down a lot of, a lot of stories, and with the story it was knowledge. And uh, so, so it's a wonderful thing to be able to, to be able to uh, receive, receive that knowledge. In doing that, receiving that knowledge, you're, you're receiving sacredness of the past. And you're also receiving sacredness of the present. And that is very important when we talk about sacredness. And and sacredness is is uh, comes in our culture many many aspects many many ways. Uh, it it not only comes in with initiations and other laws. See, once once we look at Aboriginal laws, uh, uh, laws are a living thing. It's not like your present law today, L A W. That can be change with the stroke of a pen. But living laws takes a bit harder to be changed because once we try to change those living laws and the sacredness of those living laws, uh, uh, we become just a bit sick, just a little bit a different thing that, that can happen to us. And, and we become suspect to the flu and influenza and and everything like that. So, so, so what I'm talking about is 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 the foods that we ate uh, back in the. See, I was I was born in the in the mid 30s, and uh, and uh, and today I, I I still like to go for my walk. I still like I still like to take the young men out and 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 teach them about teach them about our sacredness and about our laws. In particular, the fish traps, I was, I guess I was about uh, 12, 15 years of age, somewhere about that in, in that in that space of time, when I was told to sit on my bum and look at the fish traps. And because when you've been taught like that, you never asked why or what for. You know, you either got a bundi, you know, a bit of a whack or something, you know, because you've been disrespectful to the to the elders, you've been disrespectful to the ancients, and when I talk about the ancient, I'm talking about the ancients that handed these stories down and the knowledge that goes with these stories. You see, they're not just something; they're just not made up stuff. They're handed down. It's it's like families today that uh, that will hand down their legacies, and that's the same, same as our mob. Our mob handled those legacies down with sacredness, uh, sacred ceremonies, uh, simple ways of, 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 of going out into the bush and, and seeing fruits and berries and that. So you don't go there and they just don't go and pick that fruit and and uh, and just pull the berries off like that. If you do that, you're violating. You're not doing anything sacred. So your best way that you can do it is go into the bush and you see you see your berries or your your whatever whatever it is there, and you shake that tree or that plant three times. If that falls off, it's yours. If it doesn't fall off, it still belongs to that thing. So if you're going to take that, then you're raping that tree or that bush. And you're raping the land. And that's something that we have to hold close to our spirit, close to our heart, is trying to be able to, to practice our sacredness and our stories of, of how we must practice these, these simple things of just going out and hunting and gathering. 
spear and fish is another thing. You sort of done your little, done your little ritual before you threw that spear because you were taking a life. And if you went a good shot and you missed that, you missed that bigger fish and got a smaller one, well then there's something wrong. And so, so, so we have to look at sacredness in lots of ways. And, 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 and while we walked and we walked and we hunted and gathered, going for our food and that, and, 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 and taking, taking water out of a river, that's also something that, that, that's very sacred and very, very rich. And I've got a story on that one, but, but, but uh, we'll be here tomorrow night by the time I finish it. So, so we won't go into that one, but, but when, you take, when you take water from a running river, you dig a hole in the side and you let that water come through into a, just a little pool and then you take it. You must take it that way because if you just go there with a the bucket or and just dip into the river and, and take it out, then you are raping the river you are not taking that water in a good and proper manner, in a sacred way. So sacredness comes in, 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 in gathering water. Sacredness comes with gathering wood, foods, spear and fish, and also getting your shellfish in that. So... So we have to be very careful in, in, in how we do these things and we have to have this practice and, and most of all we have to have the, have to have the teachers and the great masters to show us that, that, that if we do these things. So when I was, when I was this young, young teenager, you know, uh, I, I was told to sit on my butt for hours and watch the ocean come in from both sides and you'd see the water hit and splash and then go down and run down and then run into this pool and they sat me in the right place these uncles and grandfather of mine so and I thought well, what am I doing you know, agitated you know and I, and I knew the old fellas was ready to, ready to chuck a, a bundy at me so, so I sat down again and I, and I worked the bum, you know, into the, into the ground and I sat there and I walked again and, 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 and for hours. And then they said to me, you had enough now? <laughs> had enough of what? <laughs> so, well, so you've got to come back tomorrow. You've got to watch this, you've got to watch this when that moon comes. You've got to watch this when Grandmother Moon comes up and you watch the, you watch the change of the water. And I said, oh. I said, so what am I watching? You're watching the fish traps. And these fish traps were done some 12, 13,000 years ago. And your two waters are coming in like this both ways and Flashing up, and when they when they bring the, uh, the, the when the water comes in, you bring the fish in, and then the stones are set and it's channeled down to this great big pool, and that's where these fish are then then taken. But the miraculous thing about that is 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 to be able to sit there and watch, sit there and watch the movement of Grandmother Moon. Grandmother Moon, Grandfather Son are the two important things of, of, uh, of, of living on Mother Earth and looking at Father Sky. They're very important. They're very important grandparents and parents besides our flesh, grandparents and parents. So to have those, to have those four elements of Mother Earth, the one that gives us everything, you know, and, and you think, you, you, you might think, what are you talking about, you know? When you go and sit your bum in your car, you know, where's that coming from? You know, you might have bought it out of a, you might have bought it out of a car yard, but you've got to remember where that comes from. 
that were birthed by the mother. So, sacredness and these fish traps are such a very important part of my life. I'm trying to get some money so that I can get all some of the Yuan descendants from Wollongong to Eden to come in and I can then have them there sitting on their butts and, 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 and watching all the different, different rising of the moons so that they can understand the level of the water and which way the water's coming in. You see, nature is the greatest teacher of all. And I had my grandfather and my uncles to teach me that. Thank you.